Hi, I'm Scott Silvestri. I'm the Surgical Director of Mechanical Circulatory Support Program and Heart Transplantation at Barnes Jewish Hospital, Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis. Today we'll be discussing our one of our cases here at Barnes Jewish regarding a patient who was very sick when he required mechanical circulatory support. And as many patients who require mechanical circulatory support, there are many variables and many trends going on, and it is often hard to tell with hemodynamics alone whether a patient is having a problem with the right ventricle, with the pump itself, or whether tamponade or bleeding is a factor. Because of this, we find using the HTE probe to be an excellent addition to the assessment of the patient with mechanical circulatory support. In this way, we can look directly at the left ventricular volume as well as the right ventricular volume. We can determine whether there's bleeding or pericardial effusion, and we can often dynamically challenge the images by altering the pump speed to determine both septal position and optimization of the patient's hemodynamics, as well as confirm that the pump is in fact working properly. With as many variables and moving parts in these patients as we see, we find that the HTE probe is a significant uh, tool in the assessment and management of these patients. This patient is a 66-year-old gentleman who presented with severe right-sided heart failure in addition to left-sided heart failure. He had significant peripheral edema and a very dilated right ventricle as well as dilated left ventricle. At that time, he would have qualified for Intermax Profile 1, but with his severe right ventricular dysfunction, simply supporting a patient with a LVAD would not have been prudent. Instead, this gentleman was placed on extracorporeal membrane oxygenator, ECMO, via a peripheral femoral approach. And then, five days later, he underwent a minimally invasive left ventricular assist device implantation on ECMO. Cardiopulmonary bypass was not utilized, and the HeartMate 2 left ventricular assist device was implanted through a small upper sternotomy, a sub xiphoid incision for the pocket, and a small left thoracotomy. After the LVAD was implanted, he remained on ECMO to optimize his right ventricle, which was weaned off over the next four to five days. During that time, we frequently assessed this gentleman with echocardiography utilizing the HTEE to assess the right ventricular function. Since that time, he has developed some sequelae of right-sided congestion. However, his right ventricular function has been assessed as moderate hypo or reasonable with moderate inotropic support. Today, we placed an HTEE probe to assess his right ventricular function, the volumes, and to further optimize his left ventricular assist device by optimizing the speed and the septal position. Dr. Kazui, could you bring us back to sure. the lowest speed for this gentleman? Okay. So at the speed of 8,000 RPMs assessed previously, we can see that the right ventricle has a normal short axis, long axis ratio, and the septum is bowing mostly to the right ventricular side. At this time, the mitral valve is opening with a reasonable opening duration, and the left ventricle is relatively full. At that time, the patient had a central venous pressure of approximately 18. Can we review the next? Sure. This is 9,000. And at this time, we see that the right ventricle remains small, again, maximizing the normal short axis, long axis ratio. We can easily see the tricuspid valve coming in and see apposition of the tricuspid valve. And we can see the septum remains over to the right side of the heart. This is an optimal position. The balance in the left ventricular assist device comes from maintaining right ventricular function through optimizing septal position while at the same time augmenting cardiac output through the left ventricular assist device and optimizing RPMs. May we look at the next? Okay. This one is 10,000. At 10,000 RPMs, this gentleman's right ventricle again appears to be holding its shape, 
yet the septum is slightly coming over toward the left ventricle, and we begin to notice what would, could be described as an early septal bounce. At this point, we see the septum moving over, and the suggestion that the left ventricle is getting smaller, but this may not be optimum for the patient's right ventricle and for tricuspid apposition. If we then increase the pump to 11,000 RPMs to confirm left ventricular dimension decreasing, can confirm the pump working, we see the next study. Okay. This is 11,000. At 11,000, we see a much more vigorous septal bounce. We see the left ventricle as much smaller and the right ventricle short axis dimension increasing significantly, suggesting that leaving this gentleman at that speed would lead to left ventricular suck down and worsened right ventricular dysfunction and tricuspid insufficiency. It's important to note that during this uh, mini ramp study utilizing the HTE probe that the central venous pressure only varied by two to four uh, millimeters of mercury. And the, the central venous pressure, therefore, is not a very specific indicator of septal position. And utilizing the visualization of the right ventricular dimension and the septal position with left ventricular cyst device patients is a significant augmentation to our ability to assess patients and optimize their pumps. So at this time, the patient is at 9,200 RPMs, has an estimated flow of 6.2 to 6.3 liters per minute, and a power appropriately at 6.2. We see that the right ventricle appears to be appropriately small, and the left ventricle is full. We have some septal movement, but not enough to be concerning. We can then change the view slightly and look at a more enhanced view of the right ventricle. So in this dimension, we see that the right ventricular free wall does move, but it is moderately hypokinetic, and we see that the base does not move significantly. In this sense, the base of the heart and any estimate of TAPSI would be significantly uh, decreased, but we do not see dilatation, which tells us that this patient is at an appropriate speed and appropriate volume status. In this view, we see that the atrial septal position is mostly in the midline, and I think that this illustrates a very important point, and that is if the atrial septum is bowing to the left, the ventricular septum often follows. Now, this view is very helpful to assess the both right atrial volumes and left atrial volumes, and enhancing the balance knowing that the right ventricle is filling the left atrium appropriately to allow the LVAD to function. Once you put a left ventricular assist device in, there's really only one ventricle that you have to worry about from a you know, therapeutic, clinical, and medication standpoint. And um, from my experience dealing with a, you know, a fair number of these patients, that patients with early RV dysfunction to the point where they're still on continued high um, inotrope support, they do a lot worse. And I think you know, a lot of these patients need a much slower inotrope wean and need much more repeated kind of imaging and management of that RV to ensure that they're going to have good, you know, full cardiac output, you know, of right to left blood flow. And then the, L the LVAD can do the work after that. I think, you know, from a surgeon's standpoint, you know, uh, during the case, a uh, patient who, you know, does severely bad after the operation had uh, usually severe RV dysfunction pre-op. So what happened during that case is that, you know, severe bleeding, and then uh, we need to manage all this uh, transfusion and bleeding and RV function at the same time. So in order to, you know, have a fine balance between all of them, getting all this information using this kind of device is very helpful especially right after the surgery, as a RV is the most important, you know, uh, cardiac function right after the LV, LVAD uh, placement surgery. So I think this is a good tool to manage all these kind of patients. 
in our system, we employ the HTE probe uh, at the bedside quite frequently. And every member of our team uh, has developed expertise in the images and using them to manage these patients. As we saw, Dr. Lynch and our fellow, Dr. Kazooie, are very facile and with the images and our team has come to rely on the addition of direct volume assessment to both optimize and problem solve and diagnose in the complex patient with mechanical circuitry support. Like Dr. Kavaraki and Dr. Malte, we find the uh, addition of live images assessing the ventricle, right ventricle, left ventricle, to be a significant uh, insightful tool in the management of these complex patients. 